Listening is an act of love. Thank you. You can help lift up the voices, stories, and challenges we share by making a contribution at thiswayout.org. A sincere thank you to all of you who already support This Way Out. Your support matters. I'm Marcos Najera. And I'm Elena botkin Levy. With News Wrap, a summary of some of the news in or affecting LGBTQ communities around the world for the week ending October 30th, 2021. In India, the Delhi High Court is set to hear arguments on marriage equality. The court consolidated multiple lawsuits targeting laws that regulate secular marriages, religious marriages, and marriages legally performed abroad. The combined cases will get a final hearing on November 30th. Plaintiffs include an Indian citizen who lives with her spouse in Paris, France. They met in New York City in 2001 and married there in 2012. Another petition was filed by a binational gay couple, an Indian citizen and a U.S. citizen who's pursuing his Ph.D. at Rutgers University in New Jersey. The Supreme Court of India unanimously decriminalized same-gender sex in 2018. However, the government continues to claim that civil marriage must be limited to one biological male and one biological female. Some plaintiff couples in the consolidated cases are basing their arguments on that dichotomy. Rulings from India's regional jurisdictions, like the Delhi High Court, generally apply nationally unless another high court decides differently. A proposed hate crimes law now lies dead in the Italian Senate. Legislation to protect people from violence based on gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability was approved last year in the lower house of parliament, the Chamber of Deputies. However, on October 27th, the Senate voted 154 to 131 to end debate. That shelves the bill for at least six months. Alarms had been raised by the Vatican that passage of the bill would restrict the Roman Catholic Church's religious freedoms. Matteo Salvini of the far-right League party warned that such a law would jail those who think a mom is a mom and a dad is a dad. Other opponents claimed that the measure would lead to the teaching of homosexual propaganda in Italy's public schools. Italian LGBTQ advocacy groups receive hundreds of anti-queer hate crime reports annually. Many go unpunished. For 25 years, there have been efforts to criminalize acts of homophobia and transphobia. All have failed. The current bill is named for the lawmaker and queer activist Alessandro Zahn, who proposed it. Supporters of the Zahn bill expressed doubts that it could be reconsidered before this sitting of Parliament ends in early 2023. The Polish government continues to flaunt its homophobia in the face of growing threats of sanctions from the European Union. Now, a parliamentary committee is considering a bill that would outlaw LGBTQ pride marches and other public events that promote queer relationships. Poland's clash with the EU began when dozens of local municipalities and regional governments declared their areas to be LGBT-free zones. They had at least tacit approval from the country's ruling Law and Justice Party. The new Stop LGBT bill, proposed on October 29th, would essentially make the entire country an LGBT-free zone. Polish citizens can submit legislative proposals to Parliament if they get the signatures of at least 100,000 eligible voters. According to the Associated Press, 140,000 signatures were gathered for the Stop LGBT proposal by the Life and Family Foundation. The same group lobbied successfully for a recent restriction on abortion rights. What's not clear is whether anti-queer President Andrzej Duda really wants to continue poking the EU bear by enacting the measure. In another of the world's homophobic hotspots, Ghanaian President Nana Akufo Addo is calling for civility in the debate around a draconian bill that would virtually outlaw queer identity. Same gender sex is already a crime punishable by up to three years in prison. The Promotion of Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021 would further criminalize anal intercourse. It would go on to outlaw transgender health care, LGBTQ advocacy, and even sex toys. The first reading of the bill took place in August, but it's not clear when actual debate will begin. Akufo Addo has promised never to allow marriage equality in the West African nation while he's president. 
His call for calm may simply be an effort to delay debate until the boiling temperatures can be lowered to a simmer. Drastic actions have been threatened by both sides. One supporter of the bill threatened to storm Parliament with thousands of followers if the bill does not pass. A high-profile LGBTQ advocate countered that she'd parade naked into Parliament if it does pass. Human rights groups have condemned the bill. United Nations human rights experts call it a recipe for violence, according to Pink News. The 2023 New Zealand census will count LGBTQ Kiwis for the first time. The survey will ask individuals about their sexual orientation and gender identity, their sex assigned at birth, and intersex status. All of the data will especially help quantify the number of trans and intersex people living in Aotearoa, the indigenous name for New Zealand. Advocacy groups are generally applauding the announcement because failure to count LGBTQ populations in the census results in insufficient funding for those communities. There are concerns, however, about the accuracy of the tally. Tabby Beasley of the activist group Inside Out worries that young people in particular may not be able to safely come out to a parent or a guardian who is completing the survey. Statistics New Zealand's Social and Population Insights Manager Jason Atwell noted that sexual orientation and intersex status questions would only be asked about people in the household age 15 or older. He stressed that all kinds of options would be available for people to describe their identities and added... The Rainbow community is an incredibly diverse community, and there's lots of groups within that. The U.S. State Department issued its first passport with an X gender marker this week. Proudly outspokesperson Ned Price said the landmark moment continues the Department of State's commitment to promoting the freedom, dignity, and equality of all people, including LGBTQI plus persons. Intersex Navy veteran Dana Zim got the first ex-designated passport. Non-binary Zim filed a lawsuit in 2015 challenging the State Department's refusal to issue a passport with the X gender marker. Jessica Stern used to lead the global queer advocacy group Outright Action International. She's now U.S. President Biden's special envoy for the promotion of LGBTQ rights abroad. Stern told the Washington Blade that the State Department will offer the X gender marker option to routine passport applicants beginning in early 2022. Finally, if you thought the issue of marriage equality had long been settled in the U.S., think again. Texas Republican lawmaker James White believes he can trump the U.S. Supreme Court's 2015 Obergefell ruling. White wrote to Attorney General Ken Paxton in late October to point out that the state's exclusively heterosexual civil marriage law is still on the books. He argued that the high court had no power to overrule Texas law and asked rabidly anti-queer Paxton to confirm that private citizens in Texas are not required to recognize homosexual marriages. Meanwhile, Trump-backed Republican candidate for Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin confirmed his opposition to marriage equality during a recent interview with the Associated Press. Then the evangelical Christian ambiguously claimed, I, as governor, will support the federal law. Youngkin's Democratic opponent is former Governor Terry McAuliffe, who called Youngkin the most homophobic, anti-choice candidate in Virginia history. Former President Barack Obama tried to lighten the mood at a McAuliffe campaign stop on October 23rd. NBC's Late Night with Seth Meyers identified yet another career path the former president might explore. Look, I I know a lot of people are tired of politics right now. I I, I mean, I understand why people just feel kind of like, oh, when's when's this going to go in. And sometimes politics in Washington feels that way, right? It's like, oh, are we still arguing about gay marriage? Really? I thought that ship had sailed. So I, 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 thought that, I thought that was pretty clearly the right thing to do. I, I, I thought we got, we got Republicans across the country who, who said, yeah, that, of course. And we're going to reopen that can of... What? 
I love when stand-up Obama comes back. Someone get that man a brick wall and a cordless mic. He must be working on material for his new Netflix special, Barack No, You Didn't. That's News Wrap, global queer news with attitude, for the week ending October 30th, 2021. Follow the news in your area and around the world. An informed community is a strong community. News Wrap is written by Greg Gordon, edited by Lucia Chappelle, produced by Brian DeShazer, and brought to you by you. Help keep us in ears around the world at thiswayout.org, where you can also read the text of this newscast and much more. And you can read the transcript and listen to News Wrap each week by subscribing to our This Way Out radio channel on YouTube. For This Way Out, I'm Marcos Najera. Stay healthy. And I'm Elena Botkin-Levy. Stay safe. This Way Out delivers LGBTQ news and culture to more than 150 local communities on radio stations around the world. And we are also a free online news service. You can choose your favorite way to listen, online or on the air, at thiswayout.org. Please sign up for our free e-newsletter, Inside This Way Out. We will respect your trust in us and make sure your personal information is never shared with others. Just send us an email at info at thiswayout.org to receive the informative and unique addition to the show. You'll be invited to join us for a more in-depth look into our stories and be encouraged to learn more about This Way Out's three decades of broadcast activism. We hope you choose to join us in celebration of LGBTQ history and culture. Email us at info at thiswayout.org to join the movement. We'll make sure you always know what's going on inside This Way Out. 